This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Henry Ford said, It has been my observation that most people get ahead during the time that others waste. As usual, he's right. A few hours spent learning how to build this transmission is not a waste of time. It's great to have you back. This is Ford E4OD 4R100 class, lesson 13. In this lesson, we'll assemble and modify the pump with components from the Superior Kit and the Transco Kit if you are installing it too. After that, we'll install it into the case. Get the pump and take it to another work area. Set this two tab thrust washer aside. Remove the 12 bolts which fasten the pump halves together and set them aside too. This is the stator support half of the pump. Lift it up and off of the front cover half. Move the cover half to the side and set the stator half down. The first thing we need to do is inspect and replace a plastic drain back valve located underneath this cup plug. This is a step on the instruction sheet from the Superior Kit. According to step five of the instructions, a wood screw, washer, and bushing from the kit will be used as a tool to remove the cup plug. They're in this bag. Follow the procedure of this paragraph and this illustration. Put the screw, washer, and bushing together as shown here. Set them like so with the end of the screw into the cup plug hole. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to turn the screw. This will pull the plug out. Remove the plastic drain back valve, guide, and spring. Take the pump half to the tank with mineral spirits. Wash it and blow it dry with shop air in order to remove any debris which could still be present in the drain back valve cavity. Get the drain back valve, spring, metal guide, and new cup plug from the kit. Assemble the valve, spring, and guide 
like so. Place them into the cavity. Finally, set the cub plug into it. Use a punch or other suitable tool and hammer in order to drive the plug about 50 thousandths of an inch below the edge of the bore. Use a V-shaped punch or a sharpened screwdriver to restake it. This will prevent the plug from coming out. Remember to circle the step number. Turn the stator support half over. The components in this area of the pump make up the pressure regulation system of the transmission. There is a spool valve, set of springs, and a booster valve and sleeve held in place by a snap ring located at the end of a bore here. Step six of the Superior Kit describes replacing both springs with a single large blue spring from the kit. There is also a supplemental new booster valve and sleeve assembly included, which should be installed too. Let's remove the pressure regulator assembly. Set a folded shop towel here. Begin by removing this inside snap ring. This is the booster valve and sleeve. Use a mechanics pick or screwdriver to withdraw the inner and outer springs. Tilt the pump half or use long nose pliers to remove the pressure regulator spool valve. There will be a circular spring seat on it. Get the new blue colored spring along with the new booster valve and sleeve. Before I actually demonstrate installation of these new parts from the Superior Kit, be aware the Transgo HD2 High Performance Kit also has replacements for the pressure regulator assembly. They are different. The parts from that kit will supersede these parts if you have elected to install the Transgo kit. In other words, for those simply wanting to install only the Superior kit, I'll go ahead and show you how the parts from it go in now. Afterwards, because we are ultimately installing the Transgo kit in this classroom, I'll remove these parts and demonstrate installation of the parts from the Transgo kit 
later. Add fluid to the pressure regulator valve and install it into its bore. Set the new blue spring in. Put assembly lube onto the booster valve and insert it into the sleeve. This will keep it from falling out. Place the snap ring like so and push the sleeve into the bore. Work the snap ring into its groove. Push down on it several times in order to make sure the ring is completely into its groove. This concludes step six from the superior kit instructions. Circle the step in order to keep track of your progress. Since we are installing the Transgo HD2 kit, I need to backtrack and remove the pressure regulator parts I just installed. I'll remove the entire pressure regulator assembly once again. I'll take the new blue spring and new booster valve and sleeve assembly back to the superior kit. Here are the old springs as well as the old booster valve and sleeve. This restores the original pressure regulator component lineup I first removed from the pump. Now let's take a look at the higher performance parts and instructions from the Transgo HD2 kit. Step four on page six of the instructions explains how to install a new spring seat arrangement, two new springs, and a new booster valve and sleeve. Here's the booster sleeve and valve. This bag has the new spring seat pieces and inner orange spring. Here is the large orange spring.
Once again, if you can, set the pump half like so. Install the two parts of the spring seat onto the end of the pressure regulator valve. Add fluid to the spools. Set it into its bore. Insert the large orange spring. Insert the smaller orange spring. Add assembly lube to the booster valve and insert it into the sleeve. Set the snap ring like so. Finally, push the sleeve into the bore. Make sure the ring is in the groove. Moving on, step seven of the superior kit instructions explains enlarging two existing holes as well as drilling a new hole through this channel wall. Perform parts A, B, and C of step seven only if you are not installing the Transgo HD2 kit. The logic here is these modifications on top of installing the Transgo kit too may cause a harsh torque converter clutch engagement or other problems. If you are not installing the Transgo kit, go ahead and use the supplied drill bits to make the modifications. Part A is to drill out this hole to 3 32 of an inch. Part B is to drill out this passage to 3 32 of an inch too. Part C is to use a 1 16th of an inch bit and drill through this casting wall in this area. Again, since I am installing the Transgo kit, I will not make these modifications and go to step eight. Step eight describes enlarging an existing hole with a 5 16th of an inch bit not supplied in the kit. This hole is actually part of the drain passage from behind the front seal. I suggest that you perform this step with a drill press if possible.
Note that I did not drill through the steel stator support shaft. Step 8 is the last step of the superior kit to be performed on this half of the pump. There are, however, more modifications to make according to the instructions from the Transgo kit if you are installing it. Step 2 on page 6 of the Transgo instructions is to enlarge the hole in the lockup firmness plug to one of three sizes of your choice. I've decided to go with 82 thousandths of an inch, which is for a firm lockup feel. There is one more procedure for this half of the pump. Step 3 on page 6 of the Transgo kit instructions explains how to install a yellow colored spring in place of the original one on the converter regulator valve. Here it is. The converter regulator valve is located here. Place a finger over the end plug and use a mechanics pick to remove the retaining clip. Put two of your fingers over it in order to prevent it from flying out. Set the clip and plug aside. Work the spring out. Use long nose pliers to withdraw the valve. At this point, wash the valve, end plug, and retainer, as well as the pump half in order to make sure no metal chips or other debris remain in the casting. Add fluid to the valve and install it. Insert the new yellow colored spring. Install the end plug with the threaded end facing outward. Replace the clip. Set this half of the pump to the side. Lift out the pump rotors and set them aside. The front seal and pump to torque converter hub bushing should always be replaced. Take the pump cover to another work area. Place the cover onto a section of plywood in order to keep the machine finish from being marred. Remove the front seal by collapsing it 
with a large screwdriver and hammer. Use a permanent pin to mark where the groove in the bushing is between these areas in the rotor cavity. Note the machine lip on this 4100 pump cover which prevents the bushing from moving forward into the front seal. Earlier pumps do not have this feature. Also take note of how the bushing is staked into place here and here. Drive the bushing out with a large screwdriver and hammer. Step 9 of the Superior Kit describes techniques for preventing the front seal from blowing out. First of all, you must enlarge a drain passage between the bushing and front seal to 5 sixteenths of an inch. Drill from this area until you intersect with this passage without going beyond it. Be careful not to drill through the other side of the casting. I used my mechanics pick to gauge the depth and transferred this length to the drill bit by marking it with tape. Clean the cover in mineral spirits and blow it dry. Try not to wash off this mark. Set the cover like so. Get the new pump bushing which comes in the deluxe kit. Align the end of the groove in the bushing with a mark in the pump cavity. Drive it in with a large valve, socket, or bushing driver, and hammer. Use the old bushing or a large socket to drive it in a little further.
fully installed, this end of the bushing should be below this surface of the pump cavity. The other end should butt against this ridge or about 20 to 40 thousandths of an inch below the other end of the bushing bore. Stake the new bushing at these two notches. I made a tool just for this purpose by grinding down an old large stubby screwdriver. The end is about an eighth of an inch wide. Step 9 also describes how to make additional notches in the pump cavity in order to stake the bushing from this side too. If you do not have the equipment to grind the notches in order to do this, skip this procedure. The lip on the other end of the bore does a good job of preventing the bushing from walking into the seal. We need to test the bushing to converter hub clearance. Take the cover to the torque converter. Set the cover onto the torque converter hub like so. If it is too tight, tap around the cover with a section of 2 before. This will knock down any high spots and loosen it up. Install the new front seal with an installation tool or wood block and hammer. Take the pump cover back to the other work area. Put fluid into the rotor cavity. Add fluid to the outer rotor and install it. Add fluid to the inner rotor. The chamfers here and here help guide the torque converter hub into it. 
make sure you install this side of the rotor toward the front seal and bushing. Align the stator support half with the cover, turn it over, and set it like so. Install the 12 bolts which fasten the halves together only a few turns. Before tightening them completely, you must align the halves precisely. A great tool for this is an extremely overpriced professional tool I bought years ago. An even better one is actually two 7-inch worm clamps for dryer hoses hooked together. You can get them from Lowe's for a few dollars. Attach it to the outer diameter of the pump. Lightly snug the bolts with a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Finally, torque the bolts to 20 foot pounds, 240 inch pounds, or 28 newton meters. Remove the band. Use assembly lube to paste the pump to coast clutch drum thrust washer into place. Remove the Coast Clutch Teflon sealing rings.
the new ones are in the ceiling ring sub kit. Install them. The ends of the rings go together as you see here. Put assembly lube on them. Turn the pump over. Remove this Teflon seal. The new one is in the sub kit. Install it like so. Put assembly lube onto it. The pump is now ready to install, but before we actually do, let's prepare the case for a test fit. Apply fluid or assembly lube to this area of the case. Get the pump. In order to make sure thrust bearings, washers, and coast clutch friction plate teeth are where they should be, we'll test fit the pump with no pump to case overing or pump to case gasket. If all the drivetrain parts have been installed correctly, this surface of the pump should make contact with this surface of the case. I can tell by feel that the pump has bottomed out onto it. If it had felt spongy and you could rotate the pump easily, as if it were resting on the pump to coast clutch thrust washer, something is out of place. Recheck the friction plates of the coast clutch to make sure they are splined with the teeth on the overdrive ring gear. Remove the pump. Get the pump to case gasket and the pump to case o ring. Set the gasket into place. Place the O-ring into this groove.
get the nine pump the case bolts from the parts bench. Use pliers to remove the old ceiling washers. The new ones are in the miscellaneous subkit. Put one on each bolt. Align this hole for the filter neck with the pan rail. Look down into the bolt holes of the pump and align them with the holes in the case. Thread the bolts in finger tight. Use a 10 millimeter socket, extension, and ratchet to tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern, which will pull the pump downward. Finally torque the bolts to 20 foot-pounds, 240 inch-pounds, or 28 newton meters. This completes the drivetrain installation. You have now built about 75% of a very tough transmission. 
Join me later in lesson 14 and we'll reposition the case sideways and begin working in the bow body area.